Ha. Ha. Check. It's real echo in here. Hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this Stuff and Things, we are stuck inside, unfortunately. I wanted to go to Butt Rock Beach. Hey, but it's raining absolutely like crazy today. It is tipping it down, as you might say in the UK. And so I'm stuck inside. Uh, I just recorded a video, but let's get into all of that. We have many things to talk about on this week's Sunday Stuff and Things, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to on Stuff and Things and working. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the next blends, or well, probably the next blend that we're going to be talking about on the channel. Um, you mentioned in last week's episode, or the response to last week's episode, you said you did want to see me talking about limited blends. So I'll show you the next limited blend, sort of limited blend, that I'm going to be talking about. Then I want to discuss kind of a mini rant. This propensity for certain people to correct people without having the proper information. Maybe that sounds convoluted or a weird way of saying that, but we'll get into that. And then of course we have your questions, comments, and feedback in hashtag ask stuff and things. Let's get into it. So what can you look forward to on stuff and things and working? Well, this coming week, we are going to be doing the six month update on these beautiful NYX Holman custom engineer boots. These things are fantastic. It's been six months since I received them and I thought it was time for an update. So you'll be seeing that next week. The week after that, we will have the kind of combination of first impressions review for Sutliff, the old boss. One of those limited blends we've been talking about. And then the week after that, it's getting a little boot heavy, but it was time to clean and condition my beautiful NYX Urban Lager leather boots. These are my work boots. And so I did a how to do stuff and things video about cleaning and conditioning very dirty leather work boots. We've done it about cowboy boots in the past, but I use different products, different method. And it's kind of a whole different process because these get so much dirtier than any of my other boots get. So that video is coming up. And then we have episode 35 of Working. We're finishing out the foundation on Lummy Island. Again, it's always kind of an adventure pouring concrete on Lummy Island. Please check out the Working channel if you haven't yet. I'm going to ask you every week until you finally do it. There is a link in the description box below. Some people said, hey, I'm having trouble finding the working channel. You probably are having trouble finding the working channel because it's hard to find on YouTube. But there's a link in the description box below. All you do is scroll down on this video, hit the link to working, hit the subscribe button on working, maybe watch some videos. Super easy, super simple, takes no time whatsoever. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah. Lots more stuff coming up. We might have a cool custom pipe to look at soon too. Looking forward to that, so stay tuned. Okay, so I don't know if this blend actually is limited. I can't find any information online whether or not this is going to stay in normal production or if it is going to be a limited production blend, but it is Seattle Pipe Club Hogshead Bourbon Barrel Age. So they have their normal Hogshead that is a you know, perpetual blend. They're always blending it. It's pretty much always available. I don't know if this signature series bourbon barrel aged is going to be limited or not. I do know. It, okay. I kind of have a thing with this signature series propensity that Seattle Pipe Club has in their signature series to just put out something that is a bourbon barrel aged version of it or a rum barrel aged version of it. I don't know how much that's really adding to the blend. I haven't loved really any of them that have come out and it seems kind of gimmicky and shall I say even a little lazy? I don't know. So <laughs> I picked this out because that's kind of how I'm starting to feel about all of these bourbon barrel aged or rum barrel aged versions of the, of the Seattle Pipe Club, Club blends. And it seems like maybe they're just putting a lot of effort, well, maybe not that much effort at all, really, into putting out all these kind of strange limited run versions of 
their normal blends. And I'm just curious what you guys think about that out in the comments below. Let me know. I think I will take a look at this blend unless you guys just aren't interested in it at all. But I'm getting kind of tired of this trend with Seattle Pipe Club. What do you guys think? All right, so <laughs> the other day, I posted one of my working videos on the construction Reddit. What is, what is it called? A Reddit page, I guess? A Reddit group? I don't know. I think a group. And I'm trying to do that because I'm still trying to drum up a little bit of interest in the working channel. And so I will post that and be like, hey, here's what it's like pouring concrete out on an island. I think the headline was pouring concrete on an island can be complicated or something like that. And typically, you know, you'll, you'll have some people view the post. Maybe some people will go look at the channel, which is always nice. You don't usually get any comments or anything when you post something like that. At least I don't usually. But I got a comment, someone posted it, just some random person, I have no idea who they are, but if you're on the construction Reddit, you're supposed to be supposedly in the construction trades. You're supposed to be a tradesman of some kind. And you're not supposed to post anything unless you are a professional. And he posted, <laughs> I, I can't remember the exact wording and it's annoying because then he went back later and edited all his comments so I couldn't save them. But basically he said, um, I think you mean cement. I think you mean pouring cement on an island or something like that. And I was like, uh, well, no. <laughs> I, typically, if this were on YouTube, I probably wouldn't even respond to this, but this is supposed to be a group of professional people, tradesmen, within this Reddit, this subreddit. So I decided to respond and I said, uh, no, actually, I, I do mean concrete. Cement is an ingredient of concrete, it's the binder, but concrete is cement and sand and some sort of aggregate, usually gravel, and then other additives and chemicals. And I wasn't rude or anything, but I was just like, no, let's correct the record here. <laughs> he wrote back and said, no, you're wrong. Uh, I think he said something like, concrete is cement when it's wet. So he sort of changed his original comment. I can't remember what the original comment was, but it was like, oh, you mean cement because cement is something, something. I think he said, because concrete was an ingredient in cement, which is the exact opposite. And then the next comment he said, no, concrete is wet cement. And then once concrete dries, it becomes cement or something ridiculous. I don't know. He has no idea what he's talking about. And so my final response to that was just like, Okay, buddy, <laughs> you just keep doing what you're doing. I think that was my exact comment. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna write that off. And then a bit later, I saw that he commented again, and I was surprised that he actually did this, but then he kind of ruined this by altering all his original comments. But he said, oh, just looked it up, mea culpa. So he admits, okay, I was wrong. But then he went back and changed all of his original comments so that it didn't sound like he didn't know what he was talking about. But it didn't make sense because he was giving a mea culpa. But anyway, just pointless and stupid, ridiculous. Um, I spent maybe two minutes responding to his comments, so it's not like I wasted a bunch of my time or anything, but I probably shouldn't have bothered. But it just reminds me, and this is something that occurs to me again and again, I find it fascinating that people who don't know what they're talking about will correct people who do. And in my personal life, now I'm not always perfect in this, but I try to be pretty consistent. I try not to correct somebody. First of all, I don't really find the need to correct strangers on the internet to begin with. That's just kind of a weird compulsion. I don't understand that at all. If someone puts something out there and they're wrong, I don't really feel the need to tell them that they're wrong. But uh, some people do, whatever. If you are going to try to correct somebody and tell them that you're wrong or that they're wrong, you better be damn sure that you're right. And I would never correct somebody unless I was really damn sure that I knew what I was talking about because nothing makes you look like more of a fool than to correct someone who does know what they're talking about and be wrong in your correction. It's just such a weird propensity that some people have, a strange desire. 
and I don't understand where they get the confidence. I'm pretty confident when I know what I'm talking about, but if I don't know what I'm talking about, I usually know that I don't know what I'm talking about, and so I don't try to give my opinion. When we talk about burning sticks on this channel, I don't know much about burning sticks, so I'm not going to try to act as though I'm an expert. And if somebody who seems to know a lot about burning sticks tells me something about burning sticks, I'm not going to say, well, actually, because I don't know. I'm a, I, I know some things, but I probably don't know as much as the person who is telling me about the burning sticks, if they are a burning stick expert. When somebody is posting something about concrete work, who is obviously a contractor who works with concrete, it's weird for someone who has no idea what they're talking about to correct the professional who does know what they're talking about. I mean, it's my entire livelihood, so I do understand the difference between cement, like Portland cement, it's the powdered cement, and concrete. Um, so yeah, where does that come from, gang? It seems like something that, I don't know if it's increased in recent years or if it's just more obvious or easy to see it because of the internet and the way things work. Is it the anonymity of the internet that gives people more of that confidence to just be absolutely wrong? I don't know, it's weird because I'm trying to think of the last time I corrected somebody and I was wrong about the thing I was correcting them about. I'm sure it's happened, but I can't remember the last time. Like I said, typically if I'm going to go to the trouble of correcting someone, and first of all, I'm usually not going to do that, unless maybe I know them personally and I want them to have the proper information because it might be important. If it's someone who's just spouting something online and it doesn't affect me in any way, then I'm not going to bother correcting them. Yeah, I just, I just find that weird. Again, it doesn't bother me. I don't care. It's just strange. I want to understand and I don't. All right, gang, but now it is time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the sun Sunday stuff and things, you can tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things. If you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me via Patreon and go right to the front of the line. If you are uh, feeling generous, you can hit that super thanks button under this video and go right to the front of the line, or you can leave questions, comments, and feedback in the comment section of my YouTube videos. First of all, via Patreon, we have a missive from Carthage. Thank you for being a Patreon supporter, Carthage. Hey Bradley, I try not to demand a lot of attention but I've had a few thoughts to share after today's episode. First, I've subscribed to Working and will start watching this week. Sounds fun. Thank you. Second, I love your reviews of Limited Run Blends. I totally get the point about timelessness, or timeliness, sorry. Oh, and timelessness. But these offerings are really exciting and give master blenders a chance to spread their wings. Third, I'm a huge fan of ancient... Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why I can't read properly. A huge fan of ancient, in brackets, Trojan War and classical Greek history. Why are you named Carthage? You should be into Roman history and Carthaginian history. Have you come across Stephen Pressfield's Gates of Fire, Thermopylae, and Tides of War, Peloponnesian War? They're required reading at military academies because they balance incredible historical fidelity with compelling writing and characters. If you've not yet encountered them, I'd really love to gift you a copy of one on Audible. The narration by George Guidal is spellbinding. Finally, I've recently hit the 700 blend mark in my tea cellar and wondered if you might be interested in looking over my list in case there are some blends you'd like to sample. Hope all is well. Oh, and I happen to like the hat. I'm not wearing the hat right now, but thank you very much, Carthage. Thank you for those offers. I have heard of Gates of Fire. In fact, I think I have it saved in my Amazon wish list. I'm sure I'll get to that eventually. Um, I don't do audiobooks. I hate audiobooks. I know most people, or a lot of people, seem to, quote, read a lot of their books on audiobook form, um, and that's fine. That's totally cool. But to me, it doesn't give me what I'm looking for. It's like listening to a podcast, and that's cool. Eh, do I really think what I'm saying right now? <laughs> I think if I, if I am going to read a book, I would rather actually read the book. And if it's, if it's a fictional narrative, and obviously Gates of Fire is kind of like a, a historical fiction, so there's some truth to it, I'm, I'm assuming, but if it's a book about sociology or something, I might do an audio version of it, but if it's fiction, I want to read it, I don't want to listen to it. 
Um, and then as far as offering me blends, that's very generous as well, but I have so many blends I need to get through. So you can send them to someone more deserving, but thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter and writing in. Next, we have some feedback from last week's Sunday Stuff and Things. This is from at Kenjiro. I enjoy seeing reviews of different blends, even if it is limited and sold out. The reason is that new info about the hobby is always welcome. So as I mentioned, we were talking about whether or not I should do full reviews of limited blends, and most people seem to say yes. At Peter's Pipes said, half of the blends you talk about aren't available here in Sweden anyway, but that doesn't mean the videos aren't interesting and informative. I didn't realize you were, or did I know you were in Sweden? Can't remember. At World of Warcraft, I like seeing reviews on limited blends. Maybe not a whole two-part review, but at least maybe a first impressions video. Seem to be a common sentiment. This is from Anne at Don Pasco 6378 It seems that Sutliff will send these limited blends to multiple YouTube presenters weeks before the actual release date. There are presenters that will review them for us before they get released so, they can, so that we can decide if we want to pull the trigger when they drop. It would be awesome if you could do the same, maybe just like a quick impromptu first impressions video as soon as you get it. I understand what you're saying and thank you for the comment, but I am not... I am not part of Sutliff's marketing machine. And I appreciate them sending me blends to check out, but I am not going to... <sighs> How do I say this without sounding kind of like a jerk? <laughs> um, it's not my job to review blends for them so that they'll have them marketed before they're released. Maybe people will say, well, that's what you should be doing for your subscribers. But, you know, usually I've got videos recorded about three weeks in advance and I've got a system for making my videos and getting my videos out there and I'm not going to jump something in line like a Sutliff blend and it might be a blend that I'm not really interested in either a limited blend just so it the video gets done before the blend is released I guess I've always kind of had an issue with YouTubers in general where it's like, okay, there's a new Fender's putting out a new guitar and every guitar YouTuber gets one of them. And then you're just inundated on your feed with all of these videos about this guitar. And you know, these people are getting paid. I'm not getting paid when I get these blends. I just get the blends, but you know, a lot of those are paid videos and it's just this like, I don't like that whole cycle. And obviously it's a much smaller thing with pipe tees, like it's obviously not anywhere near as uh, far reaching and as pervasive, but yeah, I don't know. I just feel kind of weird about it. So I will, I will look at the blends. I do appreciate getting the blends, but I will look at the blends. I will make videos about the blends that I'm interested in and on my timetable. Maybe that's me being weird and stubborn, but that's just kind of how I feel. Uh, now we have some information or some feedback about the hat, the famous hat that I was talking about in the last episode or last week's Sunday stuff and things. This is from at Martin Felt. I like the hat. Looks great on you. I would wear one myself. At Daniel Garrett, your hat looks like the love child of a Greek fisherman's hat and a baseball cap. Kind of cool. At Smashing Artful, uh, that hat is very unmanly. He's quoting someone I was quoting. Not sure why, but that one is absolutely killing me. By the way, I think the hat looks cool on you. So most people seem to like the hat. And then there is a response about me talking about how the school year seemed to have been extended, or at least that the summer breaks seem to be shorter for kids these days. At Sugo Baugi, something like that. Uh, here in Finland, school ends May 31st and begins on August 8th. So yeah, they don't have much of August. A week less than there. When I was a child, school began on August 15th, so children have lost a week of summer vacation. I didn't know that. And yeah, when I was a kid, school would end in May, I think like the end of May, right towards the end of May, and then start again after Labor Day in September. Basically. That's what I remember anyway. Uh, at Sound Dude 177 in Arizona, in Arizona, school start the first week of August and end the week before Memorial Day. Okay. Uh, this is so a fall semester completes before Christmas. Where I grew up, school started after Labor Day, but fall semester carried over until January. We didn't get out for summer until mid-June. Also, most schools do a fall break now, which they didn't do when I was in school. If you add up all the school days, it's the same, just distributed differently. Yeah, and so a lot of this depends on when, when you grew up and all that and where you grew up. And a lot of people were telling me, oh, well, actually, kids get about the same time off, but they just distribute it more evenly throughout the year. 
That was kind of my point though. I don't like that. It, it, obviously it has no effect on me whatsoever. I'm not in school, I don't have any kids in school. But if I were in school, I would prefer having a big block of time off during the summer as opposed to having a little bit longer in the fall or a little bit longer, what is fall break? We didn't have any fall break. A little bit longer in uh, winter for Christmas or for spring. I would rather have it all in a big old block in the summer. Uh, is that it? No, we have some feedback from Toscano Classical Guitar, or Classico, okay, Toscano Classico burning stick. There was some weird shenanigans going on with this video and the comments. I posted the video and the comments were just turned off automatically when I first posted it. Turned them back on, checked again a few hours later, turned off again, turned it back on again, they were turned off again. Happened about three or four times and then finally the last time I turned them on again, they seemed to have stayed on. I don't know what's going on with that. I have no idea if there's something nefarious happening with YouTube or it might just be a glitch with that particular video. Some people were commenting and saying, oh, they're doing this on purpose. I don't know. I don't really have any evidence for that. None of my other videos were having this issue, so I don't know. But there was a period where I think a lot of you couldn't comment and I couldn't respond. But anyway, I was able to get some on that video. This is from at Drooling Neo Brewery. Uh, they are a dry cure cigar or a burning stick. You don't put them in a humidor. They can burst in rare cases if they get humidifi humidified too fast even. Yeah, I actually kind of researched like, oh, what does dry cure mean exactly as far as whether or not you need to keep them humidified? So that's cool. At Tom Brown said, Bradley, I've never had a Toscano, but I have est mini Marsh Wheeling Virginias. Don't know if they're still made, but I want one now. A friend of mine used to s par parodies a dry cured small Italian burning stick, but only when he was drunk. He got down on hands and knees and got about the room puffing and making train sounds. It would have been great with uh, when Clint was facing off against Lee Van Cleef and Lee was essing one of his long curved meerschaums. Uh, at Solar Labyrinth, I love the Leone films and we'll have to check these out. Always think it's funny that Eastwood is so closely associated with essing, yet apparently isn't an esser or much of a drinker in real life. I guess that does help one live to be 94. Yeah, he still seems to be doing all right. And finally, at Rich Newman says, I've essed Toscanos for almost 20 years, not constantly, mind you, and love them. The Anticos by them are my favorite. So I think those are supposed to be a little stronger, maybe. I'd like to check those out too, though. Cornell and Deal recently produced three pipe teas with Toscano, Toscana, that definitely captured the flavor and strength worth trying. Yeah, I want to look into those as well. I had heard some whispers, and that sounds fascinating. Gang, we're going kind of long here. Thank you for all the feedback. Please keep it coming in. But now it is time for the very best part of the show, and that is where I thank our Patreon supporters. Remember... If you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below and it would be much appreciated. It's kind of the main source of income for me doing these videos and it's pretty much the only way that I'm able to continue doing these videos. So if you enjoy the kind of content I produce, both on working or on stuff and things, five bucks a month will be a huge help. It will give you access to uh, all the videos on stuff and things early and ad free, except for the Sunday videos they post at the same time. Um, and you will have just a nice warm feeling knowing that you're helping the channel continue. But every week we like to shout out those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Glenn Dunnington, Jason Buckner, Arcturus, Ashes of the Phoenix, Jonathan Proctor, Kyle Waite Kunis, Conco Clem, Charles Mowers, and The Friendly Piper. And of course, the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month, People like Bob McGee and Ryan McFadden. And of course, we'll never forget our Hall of Fame member and dearly departed friend, Peter Stroud. I just had a nice conversation over Zoom with Ryan McFadden, our newest maniac, because maniacs are entitled to a Zoom slash, what else do people use? Meets, meetings, uh, FaceTime, whatever, video chat with me every three months. Uh, that's one of the huge perks of being a maniac. I think if you're a maniac, you just really are a maniac because I don't know if talking to me once every three months is really worth it, but I think maybe they just get a nice warm fuzzy feeling. So thank you for that. I want to remind everybody, look in the description box. People were saying, oh, I can't find the working channel. I can't find this. I can't find that. There are links to everything important in the description box of this video. You can find a link to my photography centered Instagram. You can find a link to the working channel. You can find a link to probably uh, Stuff and Things Plays, to the Patreon. 
everything you need to know in that description box. So check it out if you haven't yet. Stay tuned for all the good stuff coming up on stuff and things and working. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience of the stuff and things on a Sunday stuff and things. I'll see you later. Mm. Oh, my Lord. Oh.